Hello, RetroCore kids. This is that Zoo, and I thought that I would do a profile video of sorts. That, yeah, I bet you weren't expecting this, right? Yeah, you get to put a face to my name now. The face that you've known for three or four episodes of RetroCore podcast. Hey, I'm the late edition. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I would do sort of like a profile video so you would get to know me more because you only got to hear me through four episodes and. I'm a really kind of shy guy. I don't really talk a lot. If other people are talking, I'm more prone to just keep my mouth shut because I don't like to interrupt people. You know, when I'm by myself, I do tend to draw on a lot. I don't know if you watched my four or five videos I did for the Retro Record channel for Mario Party 2. But you got, you got sort of like a taste of what, I, what I'm like when I'm by myself or solo. So, yeah, hope you... Hope you got good first impressions, but this is the first proper introduction I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share a bit of personal info that I would probably willingly share with anybody. I won't share specifics. Like, I won't give you my social security number. That's stupid. <laughs> I won't give you my debit card info. And, yeah, if you can't tell, I do have trouble saying S's in some words sometimes. Yeah, sorry. I, I don't speak the English good. Like, sometimes I think I speak Spanish better than English. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, off topic, but, yeah, I'll share some personal info. How I came to like video games. So I do have a story relating to that. I'll get into that there. And I'll talk about a few things, like, a few of my gaming interests, like my favorite game, my favorite series, my favorite character. And at the end of the video, I'll put some contact information. But, yeah. Anyway, hopefully the other retro core guys will follow suit and do sort of like a mini profile on them because I'm pretty sure you don't know those you don't know them outside of the podcast either. I don't know. I'm only been I'm only a veteran of four episodes, so what do I know? I'm the new blood. Hey, yeah, my real name is Douglas Carter. And it's kind of, I'm, don't it's kind of odd hearing me say that because I usually refer to myself as just Doug, you know, from the cart the '90s show Doug. Doug, the, 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 yeah, the 90s, yeah. yeah I, I usually refer to myself as Doug or Z. I thought, yeah, I do refer to myself as just Z in real life. It's kind of weird. I usually hear my username more than my real name because I tend to be, because my naturally quiet self, I, shy self, I do tend to be quiet. Not a lot of people talk to me or I talk a lot. I don't talk a lot either. Yeah. I'm a shy guy. Yeah. So yeah, I'm that, I'm 19 years old as of this recording. I was born in night and on August 20th, 1993. See, I'm a young guy. A young guy that likes retro games. Oh! <laughs> what a shocker. But yeah. I don't know, there's something about the older games that feels more better than older games, than the newer games, just, I like every, I like games, I'll play new games, old games, Japanese games, American games, racing games, shooter games, puzzle games, platforming games, I'll, I'll play everything, I'll give everything a fair shake, I, well, generally, I'll tend to enjoy everything to a, to an extent, I, I will tend to enjoy everything, even if the game's crappy, I will tend to enjoy, enjoy everything, but yeah, I'm the new, new blood, on the Retro Core podcast. I'm the youngest of the four people. Yeah, 19. So I'm a younger guy, I guess. I pretty much, I caught the tail end of the retro era. 93. So yeah, I, was, I lived through the Genesis SNES era, SNES, in the 64 Dreamcast PS1 era. So yeah, I completely missed the 8-bit era, pretty much. But yeah. Uh... I live I live in a small town in South Central Pennsylvania called Waynesboro. I won't give you my specific address because that'd just be creepy. Like, if you're in the neighborhood, let me know. We could get together. But how many people are going to be going to Waynesboro, Pennsylvania for a vacation? Ah, nobody. Because it's small town Nowheresville. I live in nowhere. I live in the middle of nowhere with my husband, Eustace Bag. No, I'm not homosexual, but actually... I, I, I like to be ambiguous. I, I'm not letting you letting you on whether I'm straight or homosexual. Different matters. Not related. Not related. 
I'm getting off topic. But yeah, I live in a yeah, small South Central PA town, Waynesboro. So you're about, it's around the Mason-Dixon, Pennsylvania, Maryland border. The thing is, though, I do live pretty close, but relatively close to some more famous guys you may know. Like I live two hours from Philadelphia, in which you may know as the home of Cinemassacre's James Rolfe, or the ABGN, or the Continue Show of Normal Boots. I also live two hours from Phil uh, Pittsburgh as well, which is also home of Mark and Classic Game Room. And I do live relatively pro in relative proximity to them, so I'm I, I'm in the middle of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. So if you ever go from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia, you could hit me up. <laughs> Just say no, I'm by myself here, really. Yeah, I'm, I am by myself. I do got neighbors across the hall, but that's about it. They're older folks. So, uh, yeah. And I do have peers around here, but I do have a strict policy of keeping Internet life and real life separate entities. entities. Although I'm more likely to go from Internet life to real life than from real life to Internet life. I prefer to keep them separate entities for a reason. That's my own personal thing. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so that's some basic info. I guess so you, you can put a face to my name now. He got my real name. So you can call that Hitman if you get angry at me. Tell him to whack me. You can give him a description. I'll be wearing this probably. So if you really, if you want to put a hit on me, go for it. <laughs> so anyway, now it's time to get into the more personal stuff. I guess I do have a story. I did actually write my first I am in college right now. I started college about a month ago. So I did write my first English paper on video games, how I actually got into video games. I might consider putting that into a blog post for my personal blog or extra project, which is just to be announced. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to spoil the extra project. Yeah, I'll give you a brief summary. I do have... I do. I wrote about a five-page and a bit of a six-page paper about how I got into video games. I guess I'll share that with you. I'll give you the summary. Like, it all started when I was four years old. So that was about 1997 or so. And one of my some one of, some of my earliest memories were watching my dad play Super Mario 64 after after he came home from work. He played about 30 minutes a day. And my sister and I would watch him, you know, and I would be in awed just watching my dad play. And every time, and it would be a fun time watching him play all that and all that stuff. And at the end of the 30 minutes, he would turn it off and go about doing his work and stuff because he was a busy guy and he still is a busy guy. Yeah, yeah he's always busy. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, I always wanted my sister and I always wanted my dad to play more. It's just we want more daddy. We want more daddy. <laughs> yeah. So if I sorry, if I side note, if I do get emotional sorry. Yeah. Uh where was I? Oh yeah. So uh, my dad would my dad would turn off the game to turn off the sixty four is like, We want more daddy I said, No, sorry kids, we have to I have to do work. So we would just skulk back in our rooms and disappointed. But one night, I just didn't want to wait for the next day. I went I went out there, and I turned on the 64 by myself and started playing Mario 64. Great. I was four years old, so I fantastically sucked at playing. <laughs> but I liked it. It was fun. So I guess that's how it, the genesis, <laughs> how it all began. Wordplay, yeah. How it all began, really. So, uh, so from that point on, I knew I would play games. So throughout the year, my childhood and uh, early adolescence, I would continue to play games. But somewhere along the line, I didn't really like playing games anymore. I still did because it was something to do, you know. Just sort of became automatic, you know, autopilot. I would just go in my room after school, do my homework, then I would play games for whatever amount of time, I would go to bed and repeat the next day. 
the weekends it would just be the same thing except without school or school. Yeah, school or homework. So it would just be the same thing day in, day out. I just basically got bored of games. I still did them, played them, but I, yeah. I did sort of lose interest in them for a while. But then when I was 15 years old, and I know it's 4 to 15, that's quite a jump, but this is the second event that that kind of shaped me who I am. I know I make a lot of weird movements and stuff. I don't know what to do when I'm in front of a camera. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to being on the back side, talking to, talking to, commentating. Not used to this. Talking to nobody. Well, you, I guess. I know you like finger pointing. I'm going to jab you with my finger. Ugh. Yeah, close up on my finger. That was lovely, but yeah. But telling him I was 15, I just basically was done. Just basically, I just sort of wanted to stop playing games, you know. Just sort of became too automatically, kind of like a job. That my family didn't really have internet. We had dial-up. Yeah. I'm, you know, I told you I'm 19, so... Yeah, we had, and we still had dial-up. We had dial-up, my, my family still had dial-up until just a few months ago. So I've been on dial-up, my mom and dad at least, so I've been on dial-up pretty much all my life. I just got high-speed internet a few months ago in my room, my apartment room, whatever, whatever this is, I kind of forget. But yeah, but yeah, I've been on dial-up all my life, so I didn't really get on the internet that much. So one day I just said, screw it, I'm bored enough, I'll wait for the dang dial-up to load up. So, I waited, I waited in a small attorney for the internet to load up, and I decided to search video games, whatever. And to my surprise, I did find, find stuff that, you know, sparked my, piqued my interest again. I found, like, Back, I think, four years ago, YouTube was still just starting and stuff, like one or two years old. So it was still an infant thing. I don't, I don't know if Twitter exists yet. Maybe it did. I don't know. But, yeah. But, yeah, I did find things, you know, things that piqued my interest, like, like, get world records, you know, Twin Galaxies. Well, they're not so much good anymore. But that's a whole other thing altogether. Uh, back that was back when Twin Galaxies was good and under Walter Day's leadership. Go Walter. Yeah, hope you still keep doing what you're doing. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, I found Twin Galaxies and I found stuff like personal blogs and YouTube videos. And they were so enthusiastic about video games and stuff. Even if it was the opinion was negative or positive, it didn't really matter. It's just they're so enthusiastic and supported their details with good thoughts and stuff. So that just sort of sparked something inside me and sort of reignited my passion, so to say. So, yeah. So, after exploring the Internet a little, I got off. I went back to Super Mario 64, and I got a new light on it. I started looking things differently. The spark was there. I felt like, I really felt like playing the game again, you know? So, yeah, I wanted to play it. And I started looking for different things. So instead of just playing the game, I looked for stuff like fastest routes or good strategies or unique strategies, <laughs> you know, and just trying to learn the game all together, look for nuances. I had a new thing I was going for, you know, so it gave me a new purpose and stuff. And then when I joined Twitter a year later, when I was 16 or 17, when I got my phone as a Christmas present for my mom and dad, I know you have this phone, I, and this is the phone I'm using now to record this. See, so yeah, I got a two or three year old phone right now. It works. Get stuff done. So I used to do everything with. <laughs> but yeah, I did join up Twitter. Well, I was on Twitter before, but so because of the dial-up internet, I couldn't really use it. But since I got on my phone, I downloaded a Twitter app, and yeah, I, I found some pe good people to have game discussions with, and that helped me both bolster me further. Like I could play games and talk about them, sort of like do Twitter let's plays and stuff. I would talk about the games and my feelings as I was playing Twitter, stuff in 140 character bits. Yeah, that's things I do. I'll talk about that later. So, yeah, that sort of brought, inspired me more, so to say. And that led me to where I am today. So, I've been on Twitter for about two years, I guess. That's where I've been, my, kept my presence the longest. I've been on YouTube for about a year, about, 
and I'm still not any better than when I started. And I've been on my blog for about a year, although I've been on a six-month hiatus from that. I haven't posted anything since March. <laughs> and But, yeah, and, and the RetroCore podcast, which I've now a veteran of four episodes, I've been brought on starting episode 64, <laughs> weirdly enough, which I'll get into later. But, yeah, that's sort of like a short version. If I get a good grade on it, I might consider posting it from my English professor. I might consider posting it on my blog or on the secret project, you know. Yeah, I just gave you sort of like a short version or whatever. Uh, in my English paper, I just I kept Twitter out of it. I just said social networking because, like I said, I do got the thing about keeping real life and Internet life separate. I got to keep that separate. But, yeah, that's sort of like the – just just of how I – that's sort of like a basic idea. I know this profile is turning into a full-blown profile. So I've got a few more talking points. I hope I hope you're still listening because I'm really pouring my heart out a little. Uh, I don't really get emotional, but eh. Oh, well. But it's, sort of, it's just like a base, some background, a little bit of background. So I guess I'll talk about a little bit of my gaming interest, so to say. So yeah, if you can't, can't tell, I'm on the Retro Core podcast. So I do tend to toilet. I'm Elmer Fudd. <laughs> do tend tend to lean toward older games. Although I do prefer all games in general. I will happily play anything. I my, my policy is to look for the fun in games. Doesn't matter whether it's good or bad or rip off or just plain. Bleh. Just look past all the flaws and try to have your fun with it. Even if the game is broken as all crap, just try to find that moment where this is actually fun. You know, good games, it's easier to find those, but bad games, it may be hard to find them. But just look past, that's, just, that's why you play games, right? To have fun. It's an entertainment device, you know? That's why, that's a, that brings up a whole other argument why, where I don't get people that complain all the time, blah, blah, blah. That's something else altogether. I don't want to give off. I don't want to give away too any, too much of anything. That'll be on my personal channel, my personal vlog series, but that'd be one of my talking points for that. But, yeah. yeah, I try to look for the fun in games. I try to make every game fun. Even if I find the game boring, I try to make my own fun out of it. You know, I would bring up some examples, but I want to try to stay as neutral as possible. I don't want to bring up some fire hate right now. And It may come up during some of my videos, but it's about it. But I, don't, I want to keep this profile video as neutral as possible. So, I, But, yeah, I do te tend to lean toward the re more retro, older games, like 64, PS1, Dreamcast, and earlier. Although some of, my, some of my favorite games are also on the PS2, GameCube era. And I do have a pretty good favorite couple of highly liked games on the current gen as well. Current gen. But, yeah, I wish I'll get, which I may or may not talk about, but, yeah. I say, I do the seri I do tend to lean toward older games. Like I said, I prefer platforming, racing, and puzzle games. It was, I prefer to I prefer them usually. I, but I will play anything. But I do tend to stray away from first-person shooters and RPGs. They go first-person shooters just once you play one, you play them all. That's how I feel. But I know that's not true. I do I do get fun out of first person shooters like I said, but it's not it's not usually the one I go for first. But I do get my fun out of them. But yeah, I like I said that's why I go for and the RPGs RPGs just go really slow for me. Grinding. That's all. That is all. Grinding. Grinding kind of ruins it for me. I don't mind the battles, the require battles, the boss battles, those are the fun parts. Grinding for hours and hours and hours. That's the part I hate, and and, and it kind of relates to Pokemon. I like the I don't I hate the grinding, but I like the battles against people. But again, that's a different talking point uh, for one of my other blogs, uh, one of my other talking points. But yeah, that's sort of my ju ju typical interest. And I guess my favorite game. Well, if you know me, I'm watching my personal channel. Uh, you know I like Sonic the Hedgehog, you know. He he, he was even con conceived around the time I was born. He's 21, I'm 19. He can drink, I can't. Mm. But yeah, my, same, my favorite game is Sonic the Hedgehog CD. 
me. I really, really like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And I do think it's, the, as of now, the better designed game, but there's just something about Sonic CD that just captures my interest more, you know? But I, now these aren't solid. I do tend to flip-flop my answers once in a while. That's why I do sometimes information on the subject to change once in a while. But yeah, my, my favorite game is Sonic the Hedgehog CD as of now. It's the answer I usually go to. I actually don't like picking favorites. I tend to stay away from picking favorites. And that's why it goes to why I don't really like to rate games either. 1 to 5, 1 to 10, A, F to A, whatever. F in the A, <laughs> F to A, A to F. I, I just do do play it or not. That's the, usually the extent I go to. But yeah. It's just something about Sonic CD. And the thing is, though, Sonic CD was probably one of the last later Sonic games I played. Because I did have a Genesis when I was growing up. But, yeah. But, yeah, I was three or four. I did, the first console I remember is the 64. That was the first one I got. We got. I was born. I got as a Christmas present. We had the, Gen we had the Genesis and the NES. We didn't have a Super Nintendo. I also had a Game Gear instead of a Game Boy. I would get a Game Boy Color later. So, yeah, I was a Sega Nintendo guy. Sega to Nintendo guy, I guess. Of course, I was less than five years old, so I don't think uh, I'm responsible for my interest at that age. Now, since I sort of got a better developed brain and stuff, I can have more control over my general interests and stuff. So, yeah, but, yeah. I did like the 60, but yeah, I do have a, I will talk about this, something else, but yeah, Sonic CD, and it goes into my favorite series as well. My favorite series is, well, Sonic the Hedgehog, so that wasn't obvious either. Even though the Sonic games have eh, varied in quality, especially in the more recent years, it just feels good. The platforming just feels good, man. Just, uh, just I get that feeling that I don't get from other games, you know. Just something inside me feels good when I play a Sonic game, good or bad. Just a, sp a main game or a spinoff. It's just something there that I can't describe, you know, that feeling. It's just there, makes you feel good, but you can't describe it. But yeah, I'm talking about Sonic series. Like, I did have the Genesis. <coughs> yeah, that was weird. I did have the Genesis, so I, and I also had it, it came bundled with Sonic the Hedgehog. It's back there somewhere. Yeah, that's my game wall. I do have games over there too. I have games everywhere in, in my room. So yeah, that's this my game wall. This is where probably where most of my vlog videos will take place too. But yeah, I I did have a Genesis. It, did, it was one of those bu bundles that came with Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog. So yeah, so yeah, I did play Sonic the Hedgehog. That's probably one of the first games I played, even when I was two or three years old. And I remember being kind of indifferent toward it. I mean, yeah, it's a game. I go fast, go to the right. But again, I was three, four, five years old. So yeah, Super Mario 64 is actually uh, the game I liked. To, I was like, ah, oh. no, it's because I mean, Super, the 64 is the one I have the most earliest and fondest memories of. You know, but, yeah. So, yeah. I did get the... I would get the GameCube Sonic games. Well, I didn't have a Dreamcast. We couldn't afford the Dreamcast and stuff. So, my my console history went from Genesis NES to N64, Game Gear, Game Boy, to GameCube, to GameCube and PS2, D GBA, then Wii, and DS, then PS3, and 360. That's how it went. So, in the earlier days, I was more of a Nintendo Sega guy. And that's, I didn't get into the Sony era until PS2. I didn't even get into the uh, Microsoft era until 360. But yeah, I now, and from now, I did go back and get a lot of games. You know, I have some, see, I got a bunch of Genesis games. I do got a stack of any, NES games hidden behind them, too. I got Sega Saturn over there. Uh, I did have the Sega Saturn. I got the Sega Saturn at launch too. Yeah, I was one of the. My family was one of those suckers. I got one of those things, Beast at launch. <laughs> yeah, Sega Saturn, the old good old Saturn. Saturn has some good games on it. I think it's an underrated system, you know. But again, that's a whole 
Another argument I can get into on my blog, I think that Saturn is a fairly underrated system. It has some pretty darn good games on it. Although Saturn graphics are probably the worst age 3D graphics. But again, another argument, but still. Yeah, yeah. The first, the first Sonic game I remember having thorough experience with was Sonic was the re-release of Sonic Adventure 2 on the GameCube, which is Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. That was the one I had, I became the most familiar with, and it's like, hey, I kind of like this. You know, looking on it now, Sonic Adventure 2 is kind of, eh. I mean, you only play as the Sonic for three or four levels. You only get to go fast for three or four levels. It just kind of defeats the purpose of the game. But again, another argument, I still like Sonic Adventure 2. I like it, but as a, if I look at it sub subjectively, it probably isn't the greatest game. But again, another argument, I like, I like Sonic Adventure 2. And then, again, for some reason, they released Sonic Adventure 2 before Sonic Adventure. You know, it's weird. Sonic Adventure Director's Cut. So, yeah, I got that. It's, of course, I did like Sonic Adventure as well. Again, it's, Sonic Adventure is probably aged worse than Sonic Adventure 2, even though you have more levels where you're Sonic. I think it's kind of aged somewhat worse, but still, I still like Sonic Adventure. But, but then I would get the Sonic Mega Collection, you know, for the GameCube, which has the, all the Genesis era Sonic games pretty much, minus the 32X and Sega CD ones. So it's a, no Chaotix or Sa Sonic CD which gets into why I like Sonic CD more if I had the least experience with it. But, yeah, I'll get to that. So, so I got Sonic Mega Collection. All right. I get to play the old games. I get to see what I didn't get to see when I was younger. So, I popped that sucker in and play, played all the games there that day. So, I start, I went in order. I played Sonic 1. I was sort of like, yeah, this is all right. It's a game. It feels it feels like it feels like Sonic Adventure kinda, because remember like I said Sonic Adventure is the one I was more familiar with, so that's why I was comparing it to. And then I went on to Sonic Two, all right, two players, it's Tails. He can play two players, and there's a versus mode too. Oh, that's interesting, but I didn't really feel like it. They were games I yeah, I liked them, but still I didn't really feel it. I didn't really click with me until I played Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which you had to unlock it, but still. I played Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. I remember renting Sonic 3 a while back when I was six or when I was younger. When I went back when the Blockbuster still existed. Yeah, our town has a block, had a Blockbuster. It went out of business two or three years ago, so no more Blockbuster. But I remember renting Sonic 3 a while back and I remember liking it. Liking it more than Sonic 1. Can I play Sonic 3? Yes, yeah, but I remember Sonic 3 is two player competition mode. You got the two player co op. And then I saw Sonic and Knuckles. So, oh, Sonic and Knuckles. Shouldn't it be called Sonic 4? But, yeah, but yeah, I played Sonic and Knuckles. And yeah, this is pretty awesome too. But I swear I had the feeling that they, they were in the same style. It's like Sonic 1 has a, has a different style, Sonic 2 has a different style. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles sort of had the same style. They had the same HUD, same shield monitor, same sound effects for the most part, usually. Same, same, sort of similar sounding music. So it, it, I felt like they were half of the same game, you know. You know, you probably yell at me. It's like, no, no crap, Sherlock. But remember, I was I was just getting into the Sonic series at this point. So so, it's, so once I played Sonic, through Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles enough times, I unlocked Sonic 3 and Knuckles. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, I had Sonic Jam on the Sega Saturn, so I played that, too. I forgot about Sonic 3 and uh, Sonic Jam. Yeah, the, the comp the, that compilation was, for the Sega Saturn, was the compilation to have before Sonic Mega Collection. Sonic Mega Collection made basically made Sonic Jam defunct, although there are some nice extras on it that only Sonic Jam has. But you can probably find on YouTube nowadays, but still. But, uh, Sonic Jam, I... I have fond memories of Sonic Jam too. That's that's where I truly got introduced to the Sonic series. But again, I was too young to get a full opinion of it, really. So yeah, but yeah, when I played Sonic Three and Knuckles on the Mega Collection, so that's when I got it. It's like, holy crap, these games go together. That's when I realized it. It's one big game. Holy crap, 
this is one mega game. So yeah, Sonic 3 and Knuckles was the Sonic game that sort of got me more into Sonic. You know, more than Sonic Adventure 2, more than Sonic 1, more than Sonic 2. Sonic 3 and Knuckles was the one I sort of clicked with me. You know, you know but when I unlocked Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I beat that game uh, once, uh, once a day or so for about a month. And then I proceeded to beat it about once a week for a year. <laughs> yeah, I really like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So if you watch my LPs of both Sonic's and Knuckles' side, I pretty much got that game memorized to a T. <laughs> Along with the other 2D Sonic games. But I got Sonic 3 and Knuckles down packed because I played that game so many times. And when, I never, Sonic 3 and Knuckles was just awesome. The, acts were du the levels were double the length of Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. You had a mini boss at the end of the first act, and you had the Robotnik at the end of the second act. For new, that was the usual structure. And you had the special stages. It's kind of sort of unique special stage. I kind of like the Blue Sphere more than the other special stages. And you got, and you could play co-op through this whole game as Sonic and Tails. And you could play as Knuckles in the so in the Sonic Three zones and Tails in the Sonic and Knuckles zone. So yeah, that was really awesome, you know. And the game just blew me away. The transitions between the acts, the different the nuances in the music, the checkpoints, just everything about Sonic 3 and Knuckles, just holy crap. And, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles was probably my favorite game at that point. Because I really like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. That led into me like getting to know the other Sonic games. So when I got Mega Collection, probably around 2003 or four or so, so I had work to do. I had most of the major ones at least. I had, Adventure, Adventure 2, ugh, and then most of the Genesis games. And I would go on to foster my current affinity for Sonic, not in the in that way, you know. <laughs> you. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, so yeah I, I, do, I do like Sonic. Probably, I would probably call that my favorite series because, again, and that leads into Sonic CD. You know, because Sonic CD is probably one of the Sonic games I have less experience with because I didn't have a Mega CD. I didn't have a PC. Well, I had a I had a PC. Like I said, my mom and dad's PC was dial up and stuff, and it was Windows 95. So I could I could barely get that to run anything. I did have Sonic R on it. Yeah. By the way, I wouldn't get experience with Sonic CD until uh, Sonic 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 Gems Collection, which came out in 2005 for the GameCube. I think 2005 or six. That's my first experience of Sonic CD. You know, the GameCube version, Gems Collection version of Sonic CD does a few things wrong, which I won't get into. It butchers a few things. So yeah, it was... Sonic CD was pretty fun, you know? It felt... It felt like, it felt like Sonic 1 or 2, which I wasn't... I felt kind of bummed out because I really liked the Sonic 3 and Knuckles layout better, but the time travel mechanic and the the four different levels per act sort of got to me. The amount of exploration you can do. And it still retained that flow of speed. You know, some people would argue that the flow is kind of broken because of the exploration. But, again, I'm not here to argue anything. I'm just here for my personal experience and stuff. Yeah, Sonic CD was to, was, was to be my favorite game. And Metal Sonic, you know, <laughs> Metal Sonic. You know, I really like Metal Sonic. That's my Twitter icon, if you're on Twitter. Yeah. Holy crap, I've been talking for way too long, but yeah. I just, I just consider this as an extensive profile. I, was, I, I originally was only supposed to go to five or ten minutes, but this is an extensive profile. If you're still watching, I pity you. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'll see what Chris has to say. I might talk to him, but, but yeah. Sonic CD is really awesome. The, music, the Sonic Boom, as cheesy as it is, it was awesome to hear that. You know, and the American soundtrack is very nostalgic to me, even though I do prefer the Japanese Sonic, Sonic CD. Yeah, Sonic. <laughs> I prefer the Japanese Sonic CD soundtrack. The U.S. soundtrack does hold some memories for me, because it's just the first one I heard and one I sort of grew up with, kind of, you know, for six years, if that counts as growing up with something. <laughs> So yeah, I didn't really, I didn't get to hear the Japanese soundtrack until I got the 2011 HD re-release on PSN. Yeah, I got that too. Get look me up on PSN if you want to challenge my times. <laughs> but yeah. Also, I got to know Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is my favorite 
video game character. He goes, Metal Sonic's awesome. Yeah. Metal Sonic. Yeah. Yeah, Metal Sonic. He's Sonic, except he's made of metal, which makes him automatically 100% cooler. According to his bio, he's he's faster than Sonic and stronger than Sonic, but somehow he still loses to him, which is kind of a bummer. So basically, Metal Sonic's a better version of Sonic. <laughs> and, he's just, and it's always good to be the bad guy, you know. And Metal Sonic doesn't take crap from Robotnik either. He's been known to break off from Robotnik, even though Robotnik made him. He's been known to break off. He's sort of a rebel. That's what I like about it. He's more. He's probably the most neutral character out of everybody. I always like neutrality and independence. I'm always like that. And Metal, and he doesn't need to talk. Metal Sonic don't need to talk except for the end boss of Sonic Heroes. Spoilers. It's a seven-year-old game by now. If you don't know the end of that game by now, uh, too bad. <laughs> I saw him beat it. <laughs> I saw him beat Sonic Heroes, so I'm not one to talk. <laughs> yeah, Metal Sonic's pr my favorite uh, game character. Metal Sonic. Yeah. He's awesomest. Uh, yeah, he's better than Shadow. <laughs> the original fake hedgehog. Not Silver Sonic from Sonic 2, not Mega Sonic from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Metal Sonic from Sonic CD. It's my favorite. So. Yeah, Sonic. But just playing Sonic CD just clicked. You know, the levels are big in their in their own way for Sonic Three. Sonic Three and Knuckles is just long levels, which was fine, good. Sonic CD was was different variations of each level, four variations, and that that was big in a different sense, you know. But yeah, so I kind of like the exploration element of Sonic CD more than the more linear style of Sonic Three and Knuckles. You know, Sonic. Even though the Sonic games are usually linear in general, but Sonic CD felt kind of more open, you know? That makes more sense. But yeah. So, yeah. And I guess I'll... One more thing, I'll talk about my favorite console. My favorite, my favorite console is the 64, probably. You know, yeah, I like Sonic games, but my favorite console is the 64. Again, you know, there are... Some of my favorite games are on the 64, because I grew up playing them, because the 64 was my system. It's the first one I got. Mario Kart 64, Paper Mario, Super Mario 64, Perfect Dark, and oh, the, oh yeah, Banjo Kazooie F Zero. And I have to look at my wall back there to see what I got. And Mario Party, Super and Super Smash Brothers, here and Star Fox. Yeah, don't forget Star Fox. And Zelda. Didn't really get into Zelda, but yeah, it's, again, different thing. Oh, Pokemon, Pokemans, stadiums. And Pokemans in general. Pokemans seem to give me a reason to play the Game Boy Pokemans games, Pokemon. But again, n another detail that you. The 64 is my system because the first one, the, the first new, quote unquote, new system I got after I was born. So that 64 holds a lot of fond memories for me, you know. So yeah. So yeah, I still, I still regard it as 64 as my favorite. So even though I hate the controller, the controller is just weird. I still it has some of the best games and some of the most fond multiplayer experiences I remember having. You now, you know, the classic four-player system. You know, too bad. I, I didn't really get to play a lot of multiplayer. It's just me and my sister usually. You know, even now, I don't really get to play a lot of local multiplayer because I'm forever alone. Yeah, too bad the 64 isn't online. Never really get the play of anybody. But yeah, maybe I should wrap this up. So, yeah, this is a 40-minute profile. <laughs> kind of extensive, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe I'll talk to Chris about it, see if he'll break this up. But yeah, if you want to contact, if you want to get to know me more, you can check out my personal channel on YouTube. I also, I'm also on Twitter. If you want to contact me, I prefer Twitter than YouTube, then Backloggery, my blogs, and the rest down there. I'll put everything down in the description below where you can find me. But yeah, it's because I prefer Twitter more. I'm at that zoo. I'm that zoo everywhere. You probably figured that one out. So yeah. So that was sort of like a lengthy profile. I know it's sort of saying little profile. A lengthy profile on me. I, need, I wasn't expecting to go this long. So yeah, it's a pretty lengthy profile of me. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, be sure to follow me on my other places. To follow the Retrocore channel stuff, and follow the new. I'm the new blood. <laughs> um, 
I hope you continue to look forward to videos and stuff, solo content for me and with you guys. So, yeah, there, we're going to 40 minutes now. I should probably act this, act this up. And if you, if you have any additional questions, you can ask me too. respond in the comments. Since, since Retro Core Channel isn't mine, I, I won't get the comments personally. And probably you might have better luck asking me on Twitter or send me send or commenting on a similar one of my videos on my personal channel, but I do try to check the RetroCore channels my videos so in case I need to respond to comments. Oh yeah, <coughs> like, I said, like I said, college has been getting in the way of, of my internet stuff, so I've been less less active. But I try to be active on Twitter and YouTube the most, and backlog. But like I said, I'll put everything down there. So yeah. I should probably end this more. Hopefully, this will inspire the other guys to make profiles of themselves. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. This is kind of this, this is kind of fun, but yeah. So, that's, that's probably awkward. I'm not used to talking like this, but yeah. I should probably end this. So, yeah. See you later, RetroCore kids.